Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me today for another of one of my vlogs. So in today's vlog, I'm going to be talking all about my sewing plans for the coming year. In particular, um, I've joined in again this year with a Instagram challenge. It's like a personal challenge called Make Nine. So it's Make Nine 2021. And you basically choose nine patterns you'd like to sew or knit or make in the coming year. And you sort of commit to trying to make those. And I really enjoy um, joining in with this because um, I do like a to-do list and I like ticking things off. But also I do find it focuses my mind and makes me think about my sewing goals for the next year. And also I find if I put a slightly challenging make on my list, it does encourage me to actually get going on that too. So I find it quite a helpful tool to think about and plan my sewing journey. So I'm going to be telling you all about the nine patterns I've picked and I'd like to make in 2021. Before I start talking about the nine patterns I've picked, I thought I'd share with you what I'm wearing today. So today it's another really cold day in the south of England, so I've got a snuggly jumper on. And this one is actually a bit of a refashion project. So I initially made it um, with this pattern here, the Linden sweatshirt by Grainline Studio. And it's a really nice basic sweatshirt pattern with a sort of crew neck um, raglan sleeves and you can make a t-shirt version too. I've made a couple of um, these um, sweatshirts. It was the first sweatshirt pattern I actually sewed. Um, and I made this version, it's lovely um, grey leopard print. It's kind of like a loop back jersey, a fairly, a, a fairly substantial one, so it's quite cosy. But I made it um, and I used black ribbing for the um, cuffs and the bottom band and the neck band. But when I made the neck band, um, it really stretched out and I wasn't really happy with how it looked. So I decided to refashion um, the sweatshirt. So what I did was, um, I left the cuffs as they were, I changed the bottom band and, and had enough fabric to make a bottom band in the same fabric. Um, and then I... Um, Instead of and I took the um I unpicked the um, neckband and I added on a cowl neck instead to make the um cowl neckband here I um used a pattern piece from the Tilly and the Button stretch book which I've got here um, and it's a pattern piece that's an extra piece to use with a frayer dress as so you can see it here and there it is on the model and on the um dress so I kind of hacked um this linden sweatshirt to put this cowl neckband on it. And it's created like a really cosy jumper that's so cosy around my neck so i'm really pleased with how it turned out um so that's what i'm wearing today um, my kind of hacked linden sweatshirt with a cowl neck nine from the tilly and the buttons stretch book but let me move on to the nine patterns i've picked for my make nine 2021 so i'll pop up um my make nine 2021 plans as shown on my instagram grid so you can see all the patterns i've chosen and then what i'll do is i'll talk um through each pattern and why I've chosen it and what my plans are. Um, so that's the grid and then I'll start off with my first pattern which is the Astoria sweater by Seamwork. So here is the sweater here, um, I'll show you the line drawings. It's a, it's my first pattern by Seamwork and it's a basically a quite um, cropped sweater with a round neckline. You can make three quarter length sleeves or long sleeves and it's designed to be fairly tight fitted um, so I've seen some lovely versions of this. I'll put up a picture of the model wearing it so you can see how it looks on. And if you saw my um, December makes video, you'll know I've already made a toile of this um, top because I wanted to check the fit because from what I've seen online, um, it does sometimes need a little bit of tweaking and I found that was the case for me. So I'll put a picture up of me wearing my toile and I've got it here too. Um, I used some scraps of jersey for this um, because I wanted to test it out um, and I had some of this white and blue jersey left over and I quite like how it's turned out but I did find there are a few things that need adjusting including um, the neck I want to make it a little bit lower because I found it came up a little bit high and the arms were a little bit tight on the sleeves and I think possibly I might need to adjust the body slightly too so there are a few tweaks needed but I'm really looking forward to making this and I'll show you the fabric um, I've got. You might have seen this from one of my earlier fabric haul videos, but um, this is the fabric I've got. Um, it's lovely. It's this Mind the Maker Jacquard um, stretch fabric with this beautiful kind of leaf, kind of almost embossed leaf print on in a really dark, I think it's called Indigo, the fabric. I got it from Lamazi, but it's a really dark navy blue. It's got a lovely texture to it, as you can see. 
I picked this fabric up in the Black Friday sales, I think, because it's quite pricey. And that's why I'm so nervous about cutting into it and why I really want to fine tune the Astoria sweater pattern before I do cut into it to make it. But I think it'll make a lovely um, slightly crop top and I think it'll go really well with jeans and also um, skirts. So I'm hoping I'll get a lot of wear out of that one once I do pluck up the courage to actually cut into it and get started. But that's my first um, plan for 2021, the Seamworker Storia sweater in this lovely Mind the Maker Jacquard knit. The second pattern I've chosen is one that I've had my eye on for ages and I don't know why I haven't um, sewn it before really, um, but I was um, I made an order, I think again it was from Lamazi Fabrics, and I spotted it, I had it on the website and I thought, oh if I buy that it'll get me over the threshold for free packaging, um, for free postage, sorry. So I thought um, I'd give, the, give it a go um, because I've wanted it for a while. Um, so I'm really pleased to have it on my Make 9 2021 because I'm really looking forward to making it. Um, and it's this one here. It is the Southport dress by True Bias. Um, so I've made a couple of other True Bias patterns. Um, for example, the Hudson pants, they're one of my favourites. Um, so I was really looking forward to giving another of their patterns a go. I like their instructions, they're nice and clear. And the Southport dress is described as, it's designed to double up as a cover up at the beach and a dress for around town. And I think I'm planning mine more as a dress for around town, kind of like a relaxed, um, casual summer dress. So um, you can make it either um, in a long length here and with a split at the front or a shorter kind of above the knee length. And it's kind of like a vest top style um, blousy top with buttons and then a drawstring waist to pull in at the waist. So I really like the look of it. I think it's really um, kind of casual and cool. Um, and it's designed for, it's a, a, a woven pattern. It's designed for lightweight woven fabrics with movement, such as cotton voile, voile? I never know how to say that one. Rayon, um, lightweight linen. Um, so I quite like the idea of this in a kind of linen viscose blend, because um, I do love a linen, but I think the viscose will give it a little bit more movement. Um, so I'm gonna be looking out for something. I haven't got any fabric yet for this one, and it'll probably be something I look at making more towards summer. But I'm really giving it, a, really looking forward to giving it a go. Um, it says it's difficulty two and a half out of five, so it should be fairly okay to whip up. Um, and yeah, that's my second um, plan. I'm looking forward to having a new summer dress, and I think this one is the one that could be a real um, useful everyday dress, the Southport dress by True Bias. The third pattern on my uh, Make Nine 2021 plans list is actually a swimwear pattern. Now, swimwear isn't my favourite thing to sew, I must admit, but I do um, really like being able to make my own swimwear. Um, I had a pattern on my Make Nine list last year too, to encourage me to get going on it, because I do really enjoy swimming. Um, we well, haven't been actually since before the lock first lockdown, so before last March, but I did used to go swimming on a regular basis, um, on my own and also with the children. Um, and I like to be able to make my own swimwear because I found it really hard to buy shop-bought swimwear that, that fits well and covers up enough so that it doesn't get pulled about too much if I've got a small child in my arms, but it's also something that looks nice too. So I was really pleased when I started making my own swimwear because I really felt like I couldn't find anything I wanted on the high street. So I've made a few pieces and I thought I'd show you them in case you're interested. The first pattern I used for swimwear was what was I understood was a kind of good starter pattern. It was the Megan Nielsen Cottesloe, and I made a kind of basic bikini top and high-waisted bottoms here, so it's quite covering up, but also quite a pretty shape, I think. And I'll put up a picture of me wearing that one so you can see that one. That was my first um, foray into sewing swimwear. Then last year on my Make 9 2020, I put this pattern on my list. It's the Vanessa two-piece by Friday Pattern Company. And I found this a really enjoyable um, sew, actually. Um, and I found the way of finishing the um, seams um, to be um, a better way for me than the Cottesloe. So I found this a really good pattern. And actually, if you were interested in sewing swimwear, I definitely would recommend this one as a starter pattern because I found it really good. Um, so it's quite cute. It's got a little top with a little tie front and another pair of um, fairly good covering up pants. And I'll put my versions up here. I've made two versions. I made a toile um, in um, leftover fabric for my Cottesloe. And then I made a, another version in Liberty fabric, um, which I love. So um, yeah, that was my second swimmer pattern, the Vanessa two-piece. So as I said, I thought I'd include a swimmer pattern again this year, kind of like a bit of tradition. And also because I do usually, when we're not in lockdown, use my swimming costumes quite a lot. So I've chosen this um, pattern here and it is the Pilatus Swimsuit by Opian. 
and it's a new pattern company to me. Um, I haven't seen it before and I haven't actually had a proper look to see what other patterns they do, but I've seen some lovely versions of this Pilates swimsuit on Instagram that really inspired me to give it a go. So this is my first actual swimsuit rather than bikini. Um, it's a one piece. Um, it's got a sort of um, fairly high legged um, pant piece and then it's got a um, an interesting um, sort of cut out back detail here and then a tie at the front. The tie at the front's a little bit similar to the um, Vanessa but it's a different um, shape to it. So I'm really looking forward to um, sewing this one up and actually um, I've already made a toile of this one which I made just before Christmas and I thought I'd show you that one. Um, so I used um, some fabric that I picked up in the sale and it's actually the same fabric as I used for my Cottesloe and my first Vanessa only in a different colour. It's this coral um, coloured leaf print fabric that I got a really good price in a sale from the Makers Merchant. Um, so I had a go of this before Christmas as I said um, and here it is, my um, Vanessa two piece. Um, and I'm really glad I made a toile of this one because it does need a bit of tweaking. I'll put up a picture of me wearing it so you can see how it looks. Um, but I have quite a long body and I did find when I whipped this one up that it is a bit too tight between the bottom and top. And so I think I need to lengthen the sides a little bit just to make it a little bit less restrictive. So I need to have a little play with this pattern before I make my actual final version, my, um, my make nine plan. And I've got the fabric for this one. I got it for Christmas from my husband um, because I saw it last year and I thought it was lovely, but it was um, quite pricey. So I said, could I have that for Christmas, please? And um, it's this um, beautiful um, black base swim fabric that came from System in Tarka. And it's got these lovely little scribbles of um, colours, different colours on it. I think it's really pretty um, and quite a practical colour for swimwear too, because I think the dark colours are better because they don't, if they get wet, they don't... Um, show too much through. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to sewing this one in this lovely fabric. Um, I just need to get started on that one, but again, it might be that I get started on that a bit nearer summer, um, or when it looks more likely that swimming pools might start to open. Um, but yeah, that's my um, third um, pattern that I plan to make, the um, Pilates swimsuit by Opian. As said, I'm not a big fan of sewing the swimwear, but I really do like it when it is done. And every time I sew it, I do learn a little bit more about inserting elastic um, and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, I think my finish is getting better and better on the swimsuits with more practice. The next pattern I've picked for my Make Nine is a pattern by the pattern company French Navy. And um, this is a pattern company that um, I've just enjoyed sewing recently. Um, I did make a pattern by them a long time ago, the um, Stellanti. Um, which is a free pattern, which is amazing. It's like a free t-shirt pattern and it's a great one. I'd recommend it if you do want a basic, um, fairly boxy t-shirt pattern. But just before Christmas, I made another one of their patterns, the Forsyth dress. And I'll pop up a picture or two of the two versions I made of that dress. And I really enjoyed sewing it. It's a lovely, relaxed fit, um, summery type dress. Um, it's got some lovely details too, like a button down back and a panel bodice. And I just really enjoyed sewing it, so I was really interested in trying another of French Navy's patterns. Um, they're a fairly small pattern company, so they don't have a huge amount of patterns, but the patterns they do have are really nice. So the pattern I've picked on my Make 9 2021 is this one here, and it's a Fleetwood dress. So I do love sewing a dress, and I think this one's a really pretty one. Um, it's got a button-down front, so it's kind of like a shirt dress front, with a pretty yoke um, that's on the front and back of the dress. Then it's got a gathered waist skirt um, with a frill at the bottom. And there are actually two options. Um, I think I'll show you the pictures. Here are the line drawings. You can see it a little bit better. So I said a button down front with a yoke at the top, at the back and the front, and a panelling on the bodice, um, little cuffs. And then it's got a, a, a skirt that's pulled in um, with gathers, two tiers. Or you can make this as view B, which is a lower waisted, um, a slightly dropped waist um, skirt. Um, and then just a plain and one, one tier gathered skirt. So a couple of options. Um, and again, I've seen some lovely versions on Instagram and it's quite my style and I really wanted to give this one a go. So I'm really looking forward to that. What does it say about it? It says, um, yeah, it's designed to accompany you through the seasons. Um, it is, um, yeah, it's, it's, the sleeves have a placket and a cuff. So I've never actually made a sleeve with a placket and a cuff. So I'm looking forward to giving that a go. Um, and it's designed to be in fabrics, so style A, which is the one I'm going to go for. Um, this one here with a tiered skirt and a slightly higher waist. That, that is designed to be made in light to medium weight woven fabrics with or without drape. Although it says fabric without drape will result in a more structured and voluminous silhouette. 
So I haven't decided on the fabric I'm going to make um, this one in, but what I am planning to do for this one is make a toile of the bodice. Um, I'm happy that the skirt will fit because it's gathered, so it should be quite forgiving. But I'd like to give the bodice a try um, because in the pattern it actually gives shoulder widths um, as a measurement too, and I'm not exactly sure um, how, I'm not exactly confident on measuring my shoulders and determining which size I fall in, so I kind of want to give it a go. I'm going to toilet in this um, fabric here, which is a fabric I picked up in my Tokri haul I got last year. And it's um, a fairly, um, there's not a great deal of it, um, but um, it's enough just to make a top and it's nice and soft and forgiving, so I think it'll be nice to make a toile and see how it feels um, in this fabric. So that's my plans and I'll let you know how I get on with that one and how well it fits. Um, I think it might need a bit of tweaking between my shoulders and bust measurements, but I'll give it a go and um, I'm looking forward to that one. So the next pattern on my Make Nine plans for 2021 is probably the most challenging pattern that I've popped on my list and it's a coat pattern and it's this pattern here. It's the Oslo coat pattern by Tazuti Fabrics. Now I really wanted to give a coat a go this year and I really wanted to have a proper go at lining um, the coat too. And I have actually um, made one sort of jackety style coat before, which I thought I'd show you because I don't think I've popped it on any previous vlogs. Um, and it's this one here. I, last year I made the I Am Delphine jacket. Um, now this is a jacket that the pattern is designed to be made with reversible fabric. So I've seen some lovely versions say in um, a faux suede with um, um, that's got a, a faux fur backing that look really nice. I made my version using the um, free lining add-on that you can get online to accompany this pattern. And I made this one here um, in this teddy fabric, which I got from Minerva, which is a lovely um, red, um, sort of snuggly, sort of bouquet style teddy fabric. And I, I said I used the lining and, um, and added that in here, so you can see it's got a red sort of satiny lining too. Um, and I really, um, I really love this coat, but it isn't super, um, it isn't super snuggly for winter. It is fairly lightweight, so it's more of kind of a spring autumn jacket to pop on. Um, and also, I found the lining instructions fairly sparse and a little bit tricky. So although I did line this coat and it's come out quite well, and I'm, I'm really pleased with how it has been finished, um, I didn't really feel like I had learned exactly how to line a jacket by the end of it. I felt like it was a bit of um, hard work to do it and I left, left me with a bit of head scratching at the end, um, how I achieved it. So I really want to give it another go this time um, with the new coat pattern. I'll just pop a picture of this up so you can see how it is. I do love this jacket and I love wearing it in spring and autumn. But as I said, this year on my list is really to make a proper snuggly winter coat. So I chose the Oslo coat pattern because I love the look of it. It's got a, I think it describes a shawl, um, a shawl neck kind of collar. Um, it's double breasted. It's got um, inseam in pockets and raglan sleeves. And I just really like the look of it. I think it's got a really nice shape to it. Um, and I've heard from what I've looked at online, the instructions are really good and it really holds your hand through how to line a coat. So I'm really looking forward to giving it a go. Um, I haven't got any fabric for this one yet, but I am keen to get started on it this winter while it's still cold. So what I've done is I've um, gone on the Minerva website and I've ordered uh, some swatches of fabric. And then I also found a reduced price coating fabric, a wool coating fabric that was really reasonably priced. So I've ordered some of that so I can make a toile of this one because I really want to make sure I nail the fit. And it was really reasonably priced and I thought with that I could see how thick and cosy that wool feels and then have a think about whether I need to add an interlining to the coat and make my plans. So that's the Oslo coat by Tassuti Fabrics. It's my first um, full Tassuti pattern I'll have made. I have used um, the Mandy Boaty neckline, it's another Tassuti pattern, it's a free pattern, which is really lovely. Um, I have used that neckline on another garment, but I haven't made the full Mandy Boaty, so this is my first time I'll be making and following the full instructions. And I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, so hopefully um, the swatches will arrive sometime soon, so I'll be able to show you those in a future vlog and have a look at how they compare. Because um, it's a bit of a shame at the moment with the lockdown, not being able to get out to shops and be able to feel the fabrics. And I feel for a coat fabric, I really want to be able to feel it and see how thick it comes up and how it feels against my skin and that sort of thing. So I'm looking forward to um, researching a bit more on this one. But yeah, the Oslo Coat Pattern by Tassuti Fabrics. So the next pattern on my Make Nine 2021 plans list is one that came out um, just before Christmas. And it, it's funny because when it came out, I thought, oh, that's really not for me. I don't think it's one I'm going to make. And then I saw a few versions and I've looked at it a few times and it's just grown on me and grown on me. And I think it's really lovely and also really fun. And I know sewing should be about fun as much as being able to make things you're going to wear and the fill gaps. It should be about fun too. And it's the um, Bakerloo blouse by Nina Lee London. 
and it should be winging its way to me in the post. Um, I ordered it over Christmas and I know it's been posted but it hasn't arrived yet. So I'll put up a couple of um, line drawings so you can see what it looks like. So you may have seen this pattern already around but it's a lovely um, blouse and dress pattern. It's got an oversized collar with a ruffle around it and it's also got um, voluminous sleeves with elasticated cuffs and a little ruffle around the sleeves too. And you can make it in a sort of boxy sort of blouse um, or also a skirt, um, a dress with a gathered skirt. Um, and as I said, it was one that I didn't think would be me at all. And then the more I've seen it, the more I thought, actually, that does look like a lot of fun. I'd really like to give it a go. So um, I've got some ideas for fabric for this one. And I really want to get started on it. Um, so hopefully um, by the time I come around to making my January fabric haul video, I'll have some fabric to show you on this one. But I'm really looking forward to having a play with it. Um, I'm not sure if I might make a few tweaks to the pattern possibly because um, I'm not sure about the big collar as well as the big sleeve so I'm not sure if I might tweak it a little bit but um, yeah I'm really looking forward to getting started on that one and it just makes me smile I think it's a really um, fun pattern and I think it'll go great with a um, little skirt or a pair of jeans so I think it'll be a bit of a statement piece but work well in my wardrobe. So that's the Nina Lee Bakerloo blouse. I think I'm going to do the blouse to start with rather than the dress. Um, and yeah, just a bit of fun and I'm hoping that I'll enjoy sewing that one with the little details like the ruffle around the collar. Now on my um, Make 9 um, I usually try and include a knitted garment, a knitting pattern, as well as some sewing patterns. Um, I did that last year and it really encouraged me to get started on um, knitting garments myself and I really enjoyed that. So. Last year I made a pop picture, I made the downtown cardigan by All About Amy, that was on my Make 9 last year. And I, then I went on to make another um, knitted cardigan, um, and I'll put a picture of that on there, and it's a Rico pattern, and I'll put the details down below so you can see that one too. And I've got another knitted cardigan I'm knitting at the moment, so I think having popped the first one on my Make 9 last year, it's really um, given me the impetus to start knitting, and I haven't stopped since. So yeah, I've got another knitting pattern. I had a little trawl um, online to see what I might like to make this year. And I found a pattern by Wool and the Gang um, that I thought I'd like to try. And it's a saltwater sweater. And I'll put up a picture of this one because I haven't got that pattern yet. I've actually asked um, for it for my birthday for my mum because she was um, struggling to know what to get me and my birthday's in January. So it should be coming later this month. But it's a lovely, um, it's a, my first knitted jumper pattern and it's got a lovely stitch to it. It's a little bit of an open weave style um, knitting, as you can see. And it's um, designed to be knitted in a cotton yarn, um, a Pima cotton, I think. So I'm used to knitting for myself in more of acrylic yarns. Um, so I'll be interested to see how knitting in the cotton compares. And it's kind of a cropped jumper and I think it's designed to be worn um, all year round, um, more summery with like a light top underneath or with layers in winter. So. I'm really looking forward to um, giving that one a go and I'll let you know how I get on. I haven't tried any Wool in the Gang patterns or kits before so I think it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes and um, how it knits up the sizing and the instructions and I'll let you know more about that one when I hopefully get it for my birthday. That's the Wool in the Gang saltwater sweater. That's my knitting project for this year and I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into that one. And then my final um, pattern on my list of uh, Make 9 is um, one, actually, this is the only revisit pattern I've got. And I don't usually put a pattern on that I've already made before because I like it to be um, new things to challenge myself. But I really wanted to put this one on because um, it's one I've been wanting to make another version of for a while and I really want to actually do it. And it's this pattern here. It's the Charlie Kaftan by Closet Core Patterns. Um, so I made my first version of this a couple of years ago. It comes in a couple of different versions. It's kind of like a kind of like a light breezy um, summery dress, and it's got different um, versions. Um, there's a kind of more boxy shape, view A and B, and then this is the version I made myself. It's a it's got a lovely detail at the front, ruching around little um, little um, sort of feature panel here, and it's got ties that pull it in a little bit, and a sort of gathered skirt that flows out. And you can make a full length version, but I made mine a bit shorter just because I find it more practical for being with the children. And it's got two different um, armhole sort of sleeve versions, uh, a more fitted sleeve, not too fitted, but then a really oversized um, sleeve here, kind of like a larger sleeve, um, how does it describe it? Um, a wide kimono sleeve describes it as. So I made it with the wide kimono sleeve, this v-neck front, the gathered um, waist here, the waist ties, and a shorter version here. And I put up my version so you can see it. I made it in a lovely um, viscose fabric from Alain Marzi Fabrics. And the reason I wanted to make this pattern again is because last year when we had the heat wave, 
This was the dress that kept me coolest of anything in my wardrobe. I thought it was the best thing for hot weather because it kind of covers you up so you don't need to worry too much about burning because it covers your shoulders up and all the places that might burn. But equally, the wide kimono sleeves and the breezy, loose nature of it, I just found it the most comfortable thing to wear in the hot weather. And we had about a week of a heat wave and I wished I could have worn it every day. So I really want to make another version again with the wide sleeves and a, probably a shorter one again just because um, I do find it more practical for children because I'd be wading in paddling pools and that sort of thing and not wanting to get water soaking up it. Um, See, so yeah, I really want to give this version a go again um, and, um, and also I think the first, first time I made um, the size, possibly the size 2 or the size 4 and I want to size down one size this time because I do find um, it is a little bit loose on me um, and it could do with being a little bit um, a little bit smaller. I don't want it tight by any means but just a little bit less um, swathes of fabric so that's my plan. I haven't got any fabric for this one and I think one of the reasons I haven't made it again sooner is because I've been looking for the perfect fabric and I don't know what that is. Definitely a viscose or a rayon type fabric of some sort, something really light and breezy. But I'm on the lookout this year, so hopefully as it gets towards summer, there'll be some new fabrics coming up and I'll see something that is just right for this. And I can't wait to make another version. As I said, this is my ultimate go-to kind of keeping cool, wearing on the beach in hot weather or just around the house in a heat wave type dress. The Charlie Kaftan by Closet Course. I'm really looking forward to revisiting it because I did make it a couple of years ago and I remember finding particularly this bit here a little bit fiddly and I'm not sure I um, put the markings on the pattern pieces as carefully as I should have. So I'm really looking forward to taking it slowly and making sure that all the little details are just right on my second version. That's my last um, pattern for 2021. I'll put my grid up again so you can see them all as a summary and you can see on there there's one question mark and that is because I've reserved that space for a pattern that's going to be released this year. Um, I quite like having the um, um, excitement of a choice of a pattern for this year to choose and also the flexibility to be able to add something that um, I think I could use or I just yeah really love. Last year that space was filled by the um, Kokowawa Crafts plum dress and I'll pop a picture up of that one so you can see that one that was my extra mystery 2020 pattern relief pattern I added to my plans. I haven't obviously I haven't don't know what's going to be released this year so I'm looking forward to filling that spot um, and I'll let you know in due course when I've found something that I think will fill that spot when I, I see a new pattern that catches my eye. But that is all of my plans for 2021 for my Make 9. I will be sewing other things too, um, maybe at a lower, slightly slower speed now that we've gone back into full lockdown so I've got my children at home and I'll be homeschooling them. Um, but I will be definitely getting up to some sewing in the evenings and I'll be looking forward to showing, sharing my makes with you. But thank you so much for watching um, this vlog um, and um, I'll hopefully be back again with another vlog soon. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.